Hi, welcome to the Mosomic MEMS microphone guide. My name is Mikko Suvanto. In this episode I'll talk about the mechanical implementation of MEMS microphones into devices. In particular I'll talk about acoustic ceiling and handling noise. Stay tuned! This series is sponsored by Infineon Technologies. The processes of acoustical and mechanical implementation of a MEMS microphone into a device are naturally very closely linked to each other. The difference between the two is that acoustical implementation is the art of providing the microphone the correct acoustical working environment, in practice coming up with the right acoustical sound channel dimensions, whereas mechanical implementation ensures that the acoustical implementation is stable and reliable. The mechanical implementation of a MEMS microphone into a device has a big impact on the reliability and the long-term acoustic performance of the microphone system. I talked in more detail about acoustical implementation in episode 14. Proper mechanical design of the device provides the microphone and the accompanying acoustics stability and immunity against assembly tolerances, mechanical tolerances, mechanical stresses, handling in the hands of the device user, mechanical abuse that results from, for example, impacts the device faces throughout its lifetime, and aging of ceiling materials and the mechanical structures of the device. A well thought mechanical implementation also enables minimizing the space that the microphone and the acoustic channel occupy in the device, and optimizing the locations of the microphones in the device, to optimize the performances of individual microphones, as well as the performances of microphone arrays. A MEMS microphone needs an acoustically sealed connection from the sound sensor to the surface of the device, in order to let the sound in the outside air affect the sensor as effectively and without restraint as possible. Acoustic sealing means that the channel is airtight from its mouth on the surface of the device to the sound port on top of the microphone. Naturally, also the microphone package itself must be airtight, except for the sound port. The stability of that sound channel is a key factor for a successful microphone implementation. The mechanical design of the sound channel and its surroundings in the device naturally play a big role in this. It's possible to implement a microphone also without a dedicated sealed sound channel, but that rarely makes sense. A properly sealed channel provides better performance and reliability for the microphone system. Like I explained in episode 14, compromised sealing means that at some point in the channel there is an air leak, an opening that allows sound to pass through it. This means that the sound signal or some frequencies contained in the signal, traveling in the sound channel, can escape. Compromised sealing can also mean that sound present inside the device covers, outside the sound channel, can enter the sound channel and thereby reach the microphone. External sounds entering the sound channel from the side and thereby affecting the microphone sensor, means that the microphone picks up unwanted noise. The noise can be, for example, content that the speakers of the device output. This can lead to echo problems that may lead to severe problems with communications connections, like I explained before. Other unwanted disturbances within the device that the microphone may pick up due to poor acoustic sealing are handling noises when the device is being handled by the user, keypads and button noises, or other electrical or mechanical components in the device that make audible sounds, for example camera actuators. Acoustic instability, in practice sound channel dimensions that change, or unpredictable sealing, can cause severe problems for the system. Acoustic sealing that varies from device to device, or in one device over time, or due to, for example, mechanical shocks, can cause problems with the frequency response or sensitivity of the microphone system. The variance can easily affect the performances of signal processing systems. 
Therefore, the mechanical and acoustical implementation of a microphone into a device must be done carefully to minimize the risk of any negative effects. Acoustic sealing is typically executed with dedicated sealing elements between the rigid parts of the sound channel. These rigid mechanics can be, for example, the cover of the device, sound channels formed through rigid body structures of the device, typically made out of plastic or metal, and of course the microphone package. At its simplest and most inexpensive, a sealing element can be a rubber washer or a flat piece of foam with a hole punched through it. Typically, some sort of a mechanical structure or adhesive is needed to keep the sealing element in its place. In some cases, more complicated sealing structures are needed. A rubber boot that, in addition to covering the top of the microphone, also circles around it, may be used on a top port microphone. This may be necessary to ensure an accurate enough location of the sealing element on top of the microphone, where there is typically only a very limited amount of surface area available for sealing. Sometimes there is a need to form an angle in the sound channel, for example 90 degrees. Often it's best to do this with a molded rubber element that has the needed bend in the channel that runs through it. The sealing element material can be, for example, silicone, rubber, neoprene or foam. Key properties for the material are that it must be airtight and its mechanical compliance must be appropriate. I'll talk more about the compliance in a minute. Because of the airtightness requirement, some foams or sponge-like materials are not suitable for acoustic sealing due to their open cell structure. Their air tightness may vary depending on how much they are compressed. Good acoustic sealing is typically achieved by squeezing an elastic sealing element between two rigid mechanical parts. Two things must be achieved when doing this. One, the sealing element must be thick enough to fill the gap between the two rigid mechanical parts it's supposed to seal. This means that the element must be designed to be thick enough to make sure that even if the gap is unusually wide because of mechanical tolerances, sealing is still good and leaks are avoided between the sealing element and the rigid parts. The second one is that the sealing elements must let the rigid mechanical parts settle to their designed places. If the sealing element is too thick, or if it's not compliant enough, it will put too much force on the rigid mechanics, causing the structures to bulge. This may cause problems for the whole mechanical structure of the device. It may also affect the reliability of the microphone. Therefore, the material and dimensions of the sealing element must be carefully chosen. Design features can be added to the sealing element design to enable reliable sealing without the risk of deforming the device structures. By adding a rib, or ribs to the design, the force exerted by the sealing element on the mechanics can be reduced without reducing the height of the element. It should be taken into account that the compliance of the sealing element may change over time as the material ages. Due to size and weight reasons, the mechanical structures of portable devices can be very thin and flexible, so poorly designed sealing elements may deform them. In some cases, the mechanical structures may have to be reinforced to avoid deformations caused by acoustic sealing and, of course, to ensure good sealing. There are design features that can and should be taken advantage of to make sure the structures are rigid enough. Snap hooks, screw towers, glue, and so on. The microphone sound channel design should also take into account that the device mechanical structure may change either temporarily or permanently due to handling or abuse, such as the impact when the device is dropped onto the floor. Manufacturing tolerances and aging of mechanical structures must also be taken into account when designing the mechanics around the microphone and its sound channel. In some cases, the sealing material is solder. This is of course the case in bottom port microphones that have the sealing ring around their bottom port and that ring is soldered against a similar ring in the device circuit board. Solder is typically a good and reliable sealing material, 
but the circuit board layout must be properly designed and good manufacturing practices must be followed in the reflow process of the circuit board to make sure the sealing ring is okay. In practice this means that proper wetting, spreading of the solder onto the whole ring is achieved and that gas bubbles are avoided in the solder ring. A key parameter is the amount of solder paste applied on the sealing ring before reflow. On the other side of the device circuit board, bottom port microphones are typically sealed with an elastic sealing element around the sound hole in the board. Another key factor in successful acoustic sealing is the avoidance of misaligned sealing elements. Poor co-location of the holes in the sealing elements and the acoustic tubes that they are meant to seal together can cause two kinds of problems, partial or complete blocking of the sound channel and acoustic leaks. A key factor that affects the probability of hole misalignment is the size of the hole in the sealing element in relation to the holes in the rigid tubes it seals. To avoid sealing problems, the hole size, in practice cross-sectional area, should be maximized. This minimizes the chances of hole misalignment. However, maximizing the sealing element hole size also means that a cavity is created in the sound channel, resulting in a Helmholtz resonator that may deteriorate the system frequency response significantly. That means that the sealing element hole size is a compromise between sealing reliability and avoiding resonances. It's especially important to understand the role that tolerances play in the alignment of the holes in the sealing elements and the holes that they seal. There can easily be 20 different mechanical manufacturing tolerances that affect the accuracy between different parts of the acoustic channel. It should be kept in mind that, in addition to the inaccuracy caused by manufacturing tolerances, many of the factors affecting the whole alignment are likely to change as the device ages and is used and abused. The tolerance chain should be analyzed to make sure the risk of significant misalignment is not too high. Let's have a look at a few cases where sealing can be especially challenging. The first is sealing between vertical surfaces. It's difficult to apply force between the two surfaces, because devices are often assembled in the vertical direction, often referred to as Z-direction. Therefore, it may be challenging to assemble a sealing element that has to be squeezed to its place to form a, hopefully, reliable seal. Also, the mechanical features available in the device structure that would enable squeezing the element to its place screws, snap hooks, and so on, often apply force only vertically, not horizontally. Another challenging one is a case where the sealing surfaces are not parallel. Again, it may be difficult to apply force between the surfaces, while making sure that the sealing element doesn't move away from its place during assembly, or over time, or due to movement of the mechanics around it. For example, Molded mechanical parts with drafts to make their manufacturing possible or easier are a common reason for non-parallel surfaces. Another case is having sealing elements, inside which the sound channel changes direction. The bend can be, for example, 90 degrees. Again, it may be difficult to apply adequate force on the element while making sure it stays in its right place. It's important to avoid causing the acoustic channel to collapse during assembly or during the use and abuse of the device. The thinner the wall materials of the sealing element are, the riskier it is. There can also be problems with the channel structure inside the sealing element. For example, burrs that may block the channel either partially or completely. One more example of a challenging sealing case is the sealing of very small topboard microphones. The smaller the microphone is, the smaller the area available on top of the microphone for sealing is. Careful design is needed to achieve a good and reliable seal without leaks. Special care must be taken to achieve a good long-term location accuracy of the sealing element on the microphone. With very small topboard microphones, the sealing may have to be done with a boot around the component. This may help with sealing reliability, but at the same time, the advantage of the small size of the component may be lost because of the area the sealing element takes around the component. 
The best solutions to these ceiling challenges depend on the nature of the challenge and the structure of the device. It's important to add support structures around the microphone and the sound channel that ensure that, if deformed, the ceiling elements return to their designed forms after the device has returned to its normal shape. Also, the design and manufacturing of more complicated ceiling elements must be done properly to avoid problems such as burrs or inconsistent material thicknesses that might compromise the ceiling or cause blocking. Strict quality control of the ceiling elements plays a key role in this. A topic that's pretty close to the mechanical implementation and ceiling of a MEMS microphone is handling noise. Handling noise means that when the device user holds and operates the device in his or her hand, noise is generated and the noises are picked up by the microphones in the device. The sound source of the noise can be, for example, the finger of the user rubbing against the surface finish of the device, a rattling button or other loose component within the device, a keypad when typed, or deformations of the device, which can result in creaking of the device mechanics. Device designers should be aware of risks related to handling noises from the beginning of the device development process. If problems are only noticed at the time when the device design should be finalized and released for production, it may be too late to do much about handling noises. Handling noises are especially disturbing when the device is used for capturing audio or audio-video content like smartphones and cameras. Handling noise can be mitigated in a variety of ways. First of all, the sound channel of the microphone must be well sealed in order to prevent any sounds within the device covers from reaching the microphone. The device structure should be rigid to prevent significant deformations when handled. The structure thicknesses and materials should be selected to be sturdy enough. There should be enough snap hooks, screw towers, braces and other features to keep the structure intact. The surface finish of the device should be tested for rubbing noise to make sure it's ok. Rough brushed or satin type finishes may be especially noisy when rubbed with a finger. Large flat unsupported surfaces should be avoided. Large surfaces that deform or vibrate can easily cause audible noises. High quality buttons, keypads, hinges and other moving parts should be used to avoid noises and rattling. Ok, that's it for this episode. In episode 16 I'll continue talking about the mechanical implementation of MEMS microphones into devices. In that one I'll talk about the implementation size, microphone protection and microphone placement within a device. I hope I'll see you around. Cheers! If you have any questions or comments, write them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. You can also contact me online or on social media. If you like what you saw here, give a like for the video and subscribe to the Mosomic channel. That way you help me reach more people and thereby create more content. If you need more in-depth microphone training than what you saw here, contact me and we can arrange it. The training can be adapted to suit any interests and skill levels and the customer can choose the location and duration of the course. Mosomic provides also consultation services in all things related to MEMS microphones. If you're a microphone buyer, I can help you select the right components for your product and manage your microphone suppliers. I can also assist in implementing the microphones into your device. For microphone manufacturers, I provide microphone marketing, product definition, product management and development management services. I can also help you create all kinds of MEMS microphone documentation, 